gathered here to honor the atmosphere that precious life giving source in the coming days we must change our ways now we Parthi I know you traveled a lot across the United States. In fact, I think you probably put in more than 3,000 miles. And on your trip, you met a lot of people, ones that I suspect were very pro-Trump, some that were probably pro-Clinton. But generally, from that trip, what did you learn? Actually, this uh, travel and this particular election is very unique. I've been here for all my life. But this is a particular election actually uh, given me a practical experience of American democracy, how it works, mm -hmm. and how the American political system works. I studied a lot, you know, I love constitution, I studied comparative constitutional law, but this particular travel actually given me and opened my eyes and to mingle with the real America the real rural America, the country America, the rusty America, farm America, chicken scoop America, you can call mm -hmm. it any sure. kind of this America. Sure. Here what I found is the people actually deprived their economical rights. There's a lot of people having a problem with the economy. They You're have lost saying this because they have their jobs have gone away or what's happened to change their lives? there are no jobs. Mm -hmm. So basically people are uh, feeling the heat. They don't have a job and uh, the way they used to live their life, it's not there anymore. And those people are hurting. And this is actually a white people. It's, I mean, irrespective of a color, whether it's a black, white, blue, mm -hmm. whatever you call them, but this is a white people. For example, I met this eight year old lady, middle of nowhere in Pennsylvania, and uh, she says that she would vote for Trump. Mm -hmm. And this uh, grandma tells me that uh, she's going to vote for a Trump because Trump is going to bring back America. Trump is going to make America great again. That's all her life is. Mm -hmm. For example, I was in a St. Louis in a small village. That entire village is actually a one light, that's all. Right. <laughs> right. And there is a one gas station this the same gas station serves as a pizza parlor mm -hmm. and a grocery store, everything. Here, the boys and girls, men and women, their life ends after the high school. They graduate from a high school, they got a high school sweetheart, married, they are working in a factory, but now there is no more factories in those places. Exactly. Now that mm -hmm. Tyson runs the chicken farms, mm -hmm. basically, that's all there. If you take the chicken scoops out of these uh, places in uh, St. Louis, there is no job. So these people, they started to believe what Trump says because they are not reading the New York Times. They are not reading the Economist. Mm -hmm. They are not uh, watching a CNN. They're just hearing someone saying, I can give you back what you've lost. What you lost. Mm -hmm. So this is what. So the people are angry. I completely understand their anger. As uh, President Obama very correctly said, getting angry in a democracy is your right. Mm -hmm. But that's what the constitutional guarantee is because it's a free speech. Right. And it's your freedom of expression to getting uh, angry. But as uh, Mrs. Clinton very correctly said, that anger should not be translated into destroying the democracy. Mm -hmm. What Mr. Trump is trying to do is, he's taking this anger, he's putting a fear on the people's mind and saying, if this is going to continue like this, if you're going to elect uh, Mrs. Clinton, your country going to dogs. And whatever you have right now, even that is you're going to lose. So those people already lost, like the lady whom I met her in the Pennsylvania, eight-year-old lady. But uh, she feels tomorrow her bread basket is going to be gone. Because that's what uh, Trump is riding on this uh, fear wave. Mm -hmm. So... Do you feel that either candidate can give them what they need. Uh, they, they believe, because he says that, I mean, he gives them like this, look at all this president. I mean, he, he's not just blaming President Obama. He's going to Bill Clinton, he's going to Bush, he's going against his own party, which is nominated. 
He says, entire Congress establishment is the one who destroyed. I'm going to even to limit the Congress, uh, the senator's uh, term. Uh, but basically, what is he trying to do is, he want to take uh, Reagan Republicans out of that the entire mm -hmm. basket mm -hmm. and make them into Trumpians or uh, Trump America. A coup. It's a coup. <laughs> For example, as right, I mean, uh, I could very, uh, I could say like this: like it all takes a one man, one vote. Mm -hmm. For example, look at a Russia. Where is this 1990s Russia? It's totally gone. Where is this Prostraika Glasnost? Good example. Good right? example. It's now it's become a Putinasia. Mm -hmm. That's what I call them. It's no longer <laughs> Putinasia. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a Russia, <laughs> right? So the Putin is there, so that there is no freedom of expression. There is no freedom of a speech. Mm -hmm. Pussy riots, we've mm -hmm. seen, mm -hmm. right? And look at the Poland. That is having the same problem. Yeah, and why is. you have to go to Russia or Poland? Three months ago, what we see in Turkey, the greatest country on the Middle East, the uh, model country for a democracy in the Middle East, and it's a beautiful country. But that Turkey is no longer there. Right. It the so-called the so-called the military coup. It took everything away. So now it's all a one man, mm -hmm. and he controls everything. So this is what I wanted to tell uh, fellow Americans that uh, do we want like that the kind of a country we wanted to go? So we have to think. For example, I wanted to quote uh, Dr. Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. After the uh, Constitution was ratified and uh, in, they were all sitting there, there's a woman stood up. She asked Dr. Benjamin Franklin, what we have now? I know we have a Constitution. Do we have republic or a monarch and dr franklin looked at her and he said if you can keep you can have republic mm -hmm. period right mm -hmm. so we have to decide that is so what do you think well my concern of course is how divided we've all become it seems more apparent of course with this election and Whoever becomes the president going forward is really going to have a difficult time of trying to bring people back together again. I'm just wondering if either one of these candidates can do 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 that at this point. Um, it may have taken someone like a Bernie Sanders, maybe, but with the knowledge that Hillary Clinton has to bring people together. You know, it, it's somewhat discouraging, but yet on the other hand, one thing that I have noticed is that our younger people, the millennials, like your daughter, I think she's a very good example. They're so much better educated than we were back when we were kids. They have the sources of media to be able to educate themselves. What they teach in school is so much different from what we learned. And there was no internet when we were there. There was no internet, exactly. So I think that they will be our future. And what I've seen, so many of them are so smart. And they have such good ideas that I think that they will be the positive thing going into the future. Either way, there will be a history that will be made. Exactly. But one thing I can tell you, and uh, I will not feel guilty. I have done my duty and my job to protect the democracy, whatever I could do in my limit. I have done. So I cannot be blamed myself. I could sleep uh, peacefully at night that uh, I tried all my... And you made the best decisions, yeah. Whatever I could do, mm -hmm. and I tried. You know, the rest is left with the God, I think. It is. You know. Let's see. That's it's hard for Hillary, as we know she will fight for us That's right. when she takes her seat at the desk in the Oval Office, the one that I pretend to sit behind in my day. <laughs> so that come November 8th, we can all join hands and watch the 18 million cracks that she put in that glass ceiling eight years ago yes, sir. shatter once and for all. Yes, all right? Sir. So let's go get it done. Thank you. In the coming days, we might.
must change our ways. Now we begin to chart our course.